Carl Azus. Welcome to CNN 10, where Fridays are awesome. Of course, they're awesome in a lot of places, but as long as you're here, let's see what's cooking in the world and beyond. We'll start in the U.S. Senate. It's busy. There are several major tasks on Senator's to-do list. They include President Joe Biden's cabinet nominees, his new administration's economic stimulus proposal, and an upcoming impeachment trial for former President Donald Trump. The presidential cabinet includes the vice president, the White House chief of staff, intelligence and council leaders, and the heads of 15 executive departments, the secretaries of agriculture, defense, education, labor. The Constitution does not establish or require a cabinet, but every president since George Washington has had one. And the Senate has the responsibility of either confirming or rejecting the president's cabinet nominees. The chamber is considering some of President Biden's right now. So that's one thing it's working on. Another is a new $1.9 trillion stimulus proposal. The Trump administration signed two major stimulus packages last year. One cost more than $2 trillion, the other was $900 billion. These are intended to help with the economic problems brought on by the coronavirus pandemic. And the Biden administration's new proposal will be debated by both the Senate and the House of Representatives. Speaking of the House, it voted earlier this month to impeach or formally charge President Trump with incitement of insurrection. His accusers say his statements at a large rally on January 6th encouraged some of the people there to later riot at the U.S. Capitol building. His supporters say his statements were appropriate and that he never called for violence. It's up to the Senate to decide whether to convict or acquit the former president. And there are questions about the timing of all of this. How much can the chamber do and how quickly with several major assignments on its plate and a 50-50 political split with an equal number of Democrats and Republicans in the Senate? Any tie it has will be broken by U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris, a Democrat. 10 second trivia. What kind of weather would you most likely observe on the moon? Dust storms, lightning, wind storms, or none? Scientists say the moon has no weather, so there's never a rainy day there. So the boot prints that were first made there in 1969, the American flag that was planted, the three buggies that astronauts drove across the moon, it's all still there. And the U.S. Congress passed a law late last year to legally protect American landing sites on the moon. A University of Mississippi law professor compared this to the same way more earthly laws have protected historic human sites like Machu Picchu. Well, maybe not the exact same way. Critics say it'd be tougher to monitor and enforce laws on sites that are 239,000 miles away, especially when we don't currently have the technology to get a person there. But back to the law. The idea behind the One Small Step Act is to require companies that work with NASA on moon missions to make sure they help preserve the landing sites of the Apollo missions. People are expected to return to the moon in the years ahead. Several countries are working on that. And though the One Small Step Act is limited, it concerns only U.S. moon landing sites and applies only to companies working with NASA, it is the first law of its kind concerning our only natural satellite. Western New York, Northern Michigan, and Northeastern Ohio all have something in common. And it's not just snow, it's lake effect snow. All three of these areas have either seen it or are about to see it this week. Lake effect snow can come down quickly, three to five inches per hour. And it can occur anywhere in the world as long as there's a body of water and the weather is cold enough. A CNN meteorologist named Chad Myers, who grew up in Buffalo, New York, describes lake effect snow as one of the coolest things on the planet. A CNN 10 contributor named Tyler Malden describes how it forms. Tyler. Carl, the Great Lakes can act as a natural snow machine during the fall and winter months. It's no wonder that some of the snowiest cities in the continental U.S. are near these lakes. For example, in a given year, Erie, Pennsylvania sees about 80 inches of snow. Cleveland, Ohio sees nearly 60 inches, and Syracuse, New York can pick up well north of 100 inches of snow. The reason is lake effect snow, which occurs on average from November to February. This is when outbreaks of cold below freezing air tend to spill down from the north over warm above freezing lake waters. The below freezing temperatures moving over the warm open water is the fuel for the snow machine. It doesn't stop until the lakes are completely frozen, which can take months to occur since water cools slowly. Lake effect snow bands develop when warm air rises up from the lake and gets evaporated into the cold atmosphere above. This produces narrow, 
bands of clouds and precipitation in the form of snow. The direction of the wind and the time it spins over the unfrozen water, what we call the fetch, determines how much snow falls. The bands that develop are often only a few miles wide and may only extend inland around 25 miles. These lake effect snow bands, Carl, are so narrow that you can experience a huge difference over just a few miles. One city or town could see snow that is measured in feet with whiteout conditions and impossible travel. Meanwhile, just a town over, there is green grass and sunshine. If you're not a fan of lake effect snow or any snow for that matter, take a trip with us to a place that pretty much never sees it except on its mountain peaks, the Central African nation of Kenya. It sits on the equator, not a cold place in any season. But while you wouldn't go there for the skiing, there are some amazing reasons to visit when there's not a pandemic going on. And CNN 10 contributor Chris James tells us what they are. Hey Carl, as you know, in the midst of this cold and dreary winter, I've been doing a lot of daydreaming about the places and sites I'd like to see in the future. And today I wanna to tell you about the one wildlife phenomenon in Africa that has captivated millions of people around the world for generations. Welcome to the Maasai Mara Reserve in Kenya. This is one of the most well-known and important wilderness areas in all of Africa, home to the so-called Big Five, lions, elephants, buffalo, leopards, and rhinos. It's one of the most popular safari destinations in the world. This is one of those rare places where you're actually able to get up close and personal with some of our planet's most majestic mammals. On safari, humans are the ones in small enclosed spaces, usually reinforced SUVs like these. And the animals are the ones freely roaming the land that they call home, just like they did at the dawn of time. And just take a look at this video of the Great Migration. Each and every year between June and December, one of the world's largest and longest animal migrations take place right here. Over 2 million wildebeest, zebras, gazelles, and other animals travel across the Serengeti into Kenya's Maasai Mara in pursuit of greener pastures. Herds of wildebeest can often be seen stretching across 25 miles. Now, August is typically the busiest month for tourists to visit Kenya, with around 250,000 visitors. But with the coronavirus pandemic decimating the country's tourism industry this past year, Officials are expecting a return to normal levels by early 2022. Back to you, Carl. For years, a retired teacher named Richard Escobedo has been looking for his lost class ring. Still hasn't found it. But in his visits to pawn shops and antique stores, he's come across a lot of other people's lost rings, so he's made it a mission to buy them, inspect them, use them to track down their original owners, and return the lost rings to their rightful hands. He's found 49 class rings so far and says he's doing all of this to pay it forward. He hopes one day someone will return his long lost ring. The teacher's got class and the story's got a ring. And returning the bling, the thing he's doing is reuniting some stunning sterling with the digit that would fidget with it before it would sell or ditch it. Missing all the weight with which it used to linger on the finger, the pinky or the ringer wrapped in all the ways they remember their school days. Man, I don't know, maybe that's not my best. But St. Anthony School is at its best. The students watching from Maui, Hawaii and subscribing and leaving a comment on our YouTube channel. Have a great weekend, everyone, from all of us here at CNN.